Hello and welcome to another edition of Word, Worship and Prayer. My name is Dupsi Uyene and today we'll be looking at the topic success or failure. I pray that as we look into the Word of God to understand His mind for us on this topic, that the Holy Spirit will brood over our hearts, that He will illuminate our mind so that we understand exactly what the mind of God is and how He wants us to live this life. There is a scripture that says, I wish above all things that you will prosper and you will be in good health even as your soul prospers. This scripture tells us that there is a direct correlation between our prosperity in the physical realm and the prosperity of our soul. It means that when we are prosperous in our soul, in our spirit, this automatically flows into our physical and everyday life. I'm sure if I ask you this question, do you want to succeed in life or do you want to fail? I'm sure your response will be, I want to succeed. But then the question is, is success just something that happens out of the blues or it is as a result of series of actions and inactions? So the other day I was speaking with someone and we were discussing around the issue of people having spiritual challenges. And at the end of that conversation, we were able to separate certain things. There are times when the enemy comes for you and attacks. But there are also times that people, because of their way of life, because of the things they do, they open the door for the enemy. And so today we'll be looking into the word of God to help us to understand the difference between when the enemy comes at us which we are confident that the Bible says when it comes, that the spirit of the living God, like a flood, will raise a standard against him. We'll also be looking at those things that we do as individuals that can open the door for the enemy to attack. We will also, most importantly, be looking at the things that we can do to affirm and ascertain our success in life. Let us go into the word. There's a popular saying, little drops of water make a mighty ocean means those little actions positive or negative they all add up at the end of the day they add up to whether we will succeed in life they add up to whether we will fail in life before we go on i would like to make this statement success is predictable the same way failure is very predictable why do i know this let us read the word of God together. In Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, the Bible says, and I read, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall read, you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything in accordance with all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will be successful. This is very clear. God has clearly shown us in his word the things we must do to ensure the predictability of our success. God has shown us in his word the things we must do to ascertain our success. Psalm 119 verse 9 says, How can a young man keep his way pure? by keeping watch on himself according to your word, that is, conforming his life to your precepts. I'm sure you will agree with me that based on these two verses of scripture that we have read, that if we will live our lives in accordance to the word of God, if we will follow the precepts of God in secret and in open, then our success is sure. Then our prosperity is sure. The verse of scripture, Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 that we read, a few words jumped out there and it says to carefully do everything that is written in the word of God. Carefully do them. How do we carefully do the word of God? To be conscious of what God has said, to be conscious of his will for our lives and to receive grace to execute and to live in accordance with his will. One of the things we must understand 
is that there is a blueprint in heaven for my life. There is a blueprint in heaven for your life. When we get to this side of eternity, it is important that we align with the Spirit of God to download that blueprint. It is important that we align with the Spirit of God to understand what we need to do to execute according to heaven's mandate, that blueprint. And that is the reason why we are encouraged to pray, to study the word of God, to listen to the voice of God, not so that we can tick the box and say, I have prayed today or I have read the Bible today. But what these things do for us is that it opens up our spirit man to be able to receive from God what he needs us to do. And then we can receive grace to go forth into the world and execute the mind of God for our lives. That is true success. Success is not in the amount of cars that we're able to buy. Success is not in the number of houses that we're able to build. Success is in delivering 100% the mind of God for our lives. You know, a lot of times people blame external circumstances for their actions. There's a joke I heard one time that somebody said they found the devil at a junction crying. And somebody asked, why are you crying? And it was said that he gets blamed for everything that people do. When they do things, they said it's the devil. Meanwhile, some of those things that he was not even responsible for them. As funny as this may be, it has some element of truth in it because when you do not take responsibility for your action and you do things that are contrary to the will of God, what do you expect? Today's admonition is not to condemn anyone, but it's to encourage us, to let us know for a fact that you can determine by the help of the Holy Spirit how your life will turn out. This is my admonition. You want to be successful? Take responsibility for it. You want to succeed in life? Live for it. In driving home this point, let's consider the life of David. David was described as a man after God's heart and his life was a clear example of the fact that God is loving God is faithful and he forgives all iniquities. But one of the things that we must understand is that, yes, God is loving and forgiven, but we live on this earth and we interact with human beings. We must also understand that God has set in motion some laws that he doesn't even need to meddle in how they operate. For example, the law of sowing and reaping. A lot of times when we hear about this law, we think about sowing a seed or giving an offering. But the law of sowing and reaping also affects every aspect of our life. When we sow good, we reap good. Consider the story of David, how he invited Uriah, the husband of Bathsheba, how he invited him to come home from the war just because he had impregnated his wife. And the man refused to go home. So David sent him back to the war front with instruction to Joab to say, put him where the war is most fierce. And we know the story. He was killed and David married his wife. If you think deeply, I'm sure a lot of people in Israel did not know the details of what happened. They must have just heard, oh, a man came home and then went back to war and he died. Oh, and David was such a good man. He married his wife. But between David and Bathsheba and the prophet and God, they all knew what happened. And God sent a message to David. And he said, you will not die. 
But God said through the prophet David that evil will be stirred up within his household because of what he had done. And then later on, we read the story of how one of David's son raped his sister and another brother, Absalom, killed the one that raped the sister. I'm sure when people hear that story, it will be like, wow, what kind of calamity is this? And then after that, Absalom rose up against David, that David had to run away. He left the throne. He left everything and ran away. And I'm sure people will be like, why is all of this happening to David? Yes, God forgave him, but the consequences of his action, he had to pay for it. And these are the things that determine whether we fail or we succeed in life. You know, the good thing about God is that he will always cause all things to work together at the end of the day. But saints, there are some needless pain we can avoid. There are some heartaches we can avoid if we will just live our lives in accordance to the word of God. In closing, remember this. Have you seen a man diligent in his work? He will stand before kings and he will not stand before mere men. Do you want to succeed in life? Then be diligent in your work. Be diligent in your relationship with God. Don't make your relationship with God a yo-yo thing that you come in today and you go out tomorrow. Be consistent. Be steadfast. Be unmovable. Always abounding in good work. And as we do this, we trust that the amazing grace of God will rest upon all we do. And it will cause our lives to turn out exactly as he has written it down in heaven. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask for your grace. The grace to will and the grace to do according to your good pleasure. We pray for the grace to carefully do all that has been written in your word because you said it is when we do this that we can make our way prosperous and we can have good success. Lord, I pray for the man and the woman that is listening, that paradventure they have done things in life that has caused their lives to move in certain directions that are not pleasant. Lord, we ask for your mercy over their lives to blot out every handwriting that has been written against them. We ask that the blood of Jesus will wash them and purify them and make them stand blameless before you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, because we know you are good and we know that you are kind. We know that you are faithful to your word and we trust you that you will help us to honor you in all that we do, to carefully do all that you have instructed us and to live our lives in honor and praise of your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you for joining us again for this edition of Word, Worship and Prayer. And if you're watching and you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, it's a very simple process. Just pray this simple prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I know I am a sinner and I know that I need a savior. Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord and be my savior. Take over the administration of my life and help me to live a life that will bring glory and praise to your name. In your holy name, I have prayed. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer, congratulations and welcome into the kingdom of God. Send us an email at fortisconcert at gmail.com or leave a comment. We will get in touch with you and we will recommend you to a Bible-believing church near you so that you can grow your faith in Jesus Christ. It's been an amazing time sharing the word of God with us again today. Success or failure. And just like that scripture says, I have laid before you life and death. I admonish you, 
choose life. I admonish you, choose success. In closing, I would like to share this song with us. It says, thank you, Lord. We want to thank God for his word. We want to thank him for always leading us in the path of righteousness. Till I come your way again, I'm Dupsi Oyenei. Stay blessed and stay connected. Bye for now. For the times you rescued me, for the times you plead my cause, you stood protecting me, surrounded by your grace, covered by your mercies, covered by your blood. There is nothing else to say, nothing else to do. Thank you.